the flow of information is something that is uh, uh, strictly control that is the editorial line you can choose what you want to report don't no? yes it doesn't mean that you <laughs> yes you don't just have to uh, uh copycat another another media another agency mm -hmm. you can decide that you want to be talking about only the good side of africa why not there are people there are agencies here in europe what they already report about africa is negative if it's not negative then it is no news yep. so, so, yep, you are very right. You are very right, and and the, and the, and there's nothing wrong about choosing to uh, publicize only stuff that you want to publicize, only stuff that goes with your worldview. I mean, that's what they do here. Fox Fox News only publicize certain conservative stuff. Um, there are other ones that publicize liberal stuff. So it, it's just a fact of life. You know, it's a, it's a fact of life. You, you tend to gravitate where, into what you believe. You believe yeah, that yeah. Africa should be better. You believe that despite the bad things about Africa, there are good things. Then you gravitate towards that. Absolutely. Now, there is, some, there is something I want to hang on uh, with just uh, shortly. Uh, when you were making mention of... Um, of um, of the business that you do in Africa in the sense of representation and, mm -hmm. and all that. I find it very interesting in that you are standing in the line, uh, try to, okay, you, you, you bridge the gap, no? Because mm -hmm. you are from Africa. This is a company a coming in uh, from overseas, try to invest in Africa, do businesses in Africa. Mm -hmm. Then you sort of represent them from the point of view of the law. And then you try to also make sure that the interest of Africa is, um, uh, is not overlooked. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, what I'm trying to understand there is that now this company are the one paying you. Uh, so, how are you able to represent there and also uh, make sure you represent the local interest? I want you to uh, spend more time there, explain that to me because they will usually say, "He who plays the, the, the who plays the pipe dictates his tone." No, in that if I'm the one paying the B, you should be representing me. So, I'm trying to understand how. Uh, those who pay you and those who do not give you anything, you manage to represent both of them almost equally. Please. Well, well that is, that is you are right. He who pays the piper will take the tune. But you have to understand that there is no conflict. You know, the, the goal of the company that hires us to do business, their goal is to make profit. You understand? And their goal is not only to make profit, but to make long-term profit. Now, let me give you, for instance, an example. Imagine that you are the company, and you say to me, Mr. Menes, I don't care about anything else. My goal is just to make profit. So go there, screw the people, screw them, screw them, screw them, and get me a bunch of money. So we go, and we go there, and we, of course, we screw the people the first time. Now, remember, it's people you are screwing. They are not foolish. You know, you screw them the first time. The second time you come back to screw them, they rise up against you. They destroy everything you have. They kill people. They kidnap people. Now, who do you think has lost? The company. You see what I'm saying? So, so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. there is no conflict. So when a company hires us, they know from... The time. In fact, these companies will even tell you, say, look, Mr. Menes, I want to make money, but I also want to do good for Africa. I don't think that there is any company from here that will come to you and say, look, I want to make money in Africa. Screw them. Destroy their land. Destroy their people. Forget about them. They don't do that. You know, so so, so the, the, the interests are all aligned. The question then becomes, how do we walk the fine line to see that these interests that are aligned, that we carry it out well, so that the, the community will not be overreaching and the company will not be overreaching and we both understand each other. And how do we do that in a legal way? How do we legally do it because at the end of the day, it comes down to what the law allows you to do. Because if, if I go there, for instance, let's say now I own a company and I go to a community in Africa and I tell them, okay, look, guys, 
I'm going to come to your comfort, com com community. I'm going to take your oil. I'm going to take your gold. I'm going to do all these things. And then return, I'll build houses for you. I'll, I'll build roads to reach to, the, to your community and all those things. If I say all that, but then I go back to my lawyers, I say, you know, you see all those other things I said? Don't put them down. So what has happened? It's a loss. So in the end, it really comes down to being able to, uh, to put it down legally so that whatever, what the community expects and what the company expects will become a legally binding stuff. You know, and, and, and we are able to do that because for the most part, we speak the language of the community. There are things that if I go into Kenya, for instance, and they see me as a black guy, a black lawyer, an African, a fellow African, there are things the community chief will tell me that they may not know how to explain. It's not a matter of language. It's not a language barrier. But they just don't know how to tell it to the white guy who comes down there. And it may be just a cultural thing because, you know, let's face it, in our culture, we don't like to be the bearer of bad news. And we don't, you know, we like to be polite to everybody. You know, that's the African culture. We like to be polite. Even if you are telling me things that I know you shouldn't tell me, but we just like to be polite. After all, you are a visitor. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to speak of certain things. But when I come in, they'll tell me, they'll say, hey, that thing your client is saying will not work. You know, tell him, find a way to tell him. We know you, you can speak to him. See, we are, we are, we do better than other people. All right. Now, uh, Mr. Anthony, you see, um, you remember the case of uh, Ogode people very well, right? Mm -hmm. Of the uh, pollution there that is that was caused by uh, the European, or let's say the Western multinational mm -hmm. oil exploration in those areas. Mm -hmm. All right, before I get, I just want you to have that one in mind. Now, let me say another thing. I was interviewing uh, a lady in UK uh, who deals also on international business. In this time, we were talking about contracting, cont international contracting, mm -hmm. looking at some of the contracts that have been signed by African leaders. Mm -hmm. um, in that, do the people really understand the nitty, the nitty gritty of this contract that they sign sometime? Because now we are talking about the law. It, because if you don't understand the law very well, then you can become a victim of it very easily because it's just a question of saying a few things that under it, there are layers of meaning which you, don't know, you didn't understand. First of all, the, the, what you have said underscores the need for uh, firms and, uh, like us and professionals like us uh, who do what we do. It also underscores to a greater extent the need for Africans in the diaspora to have more involvement in their communities. Because apart from being a lawyer, even if I'm not a lawyer, if a, com if a, a US company is going to my community to do stuff, do a contract, and if I'm involved in my community, uh, hopefully the chief of the community will say, hey, uh, our son, we know you live in the U.S. This company is coming to do stuff for us. Can you take a look at what they are telling us? Uh, you know, is this, you know, even without being a lawyer, having stayed here for long enough, I would have something to say. That's, so, so to a greater extent, it underscores why our people here uh, should stand as hope for our people back there. That's, that's it. The second one is, um, it's not easy, you are right, for us as a lawyer, as lawyers who are coming from here to navigate those things. Because like you said, uh, there is already uh, mistrust on both sides. You know, the, the, the European or the foreign companies that have come to our place in the past have really, some of them have messed up. 
Uh, on the other hand, there are also some foreign companies that have come to our place that have been messed up themselves. So the, the distrust is on both sides. But, you know, and that's where I say that what we do is, not, is, is a special thing. It's not just law. You have to combine law with other things to be able to convince both sides that, hey, and what I normally say to, uh, to foreign companies sometimes, because sometimes when I go to, when we have our first meeting, they're like, well, look, you know, why should I even go do business in this place, blah, blah, blah. I say you should do business with them because we will be with you to the end. And then when I go to our community and they say, well, how are you sure that they won't do us like this? I say, they will not do so because we will be in the deal to the end because we, we know both sides and we have talked to them about doing the right thing. And we are here to make sure that they not only agree to do the right thing, but that we put that right thing in the legal papers so that even if, even if Jude Menos dies tomorrow, anybody who picks up the legal paper can look at it and say, hey, this is what everybody, both sides say they will do. You see, so, so that's really the, the, the key thing. The key thing is really being able to navigate both sides. And, and when you talk about the, some of the foreign companies in the past that have messed up uh, our people, you know, it, it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate, but we have to also put it in perspective. The world is evolving. You know, some of those companies got to our place at a time when the world was in, in a different place. For instance, okay, you talked about the Zimbabwe for, uh, issue. I don't think that the deal that was made about land before their independence, I don't think that that deal could have been made if the people were already independent. You see what I'm saying? They wouldn't have. Absolutely. Yeah, not. they wouldn't have made that deal. So that would be blood yeah, yeah uh -huh. the world the world has changed, and the world is changing. That's number one. Uh, mm -hmm. At the time, some of these companies we are talking about who got to our people and messed them up. There were probably very few, uh, uh, very few Africans. Here, for instance, in the US or in Europe, who studied law, who is able to go and say, hey, we can represent, we can do both sides. The world is changing. And the world is also waking up to the fact that it's not just about making profit. That just like I think uh, Bob Marley said, you can fool some people sometime, but you cannot fool all the people all the time.